For Ariella Bas Mazel for Shlema, and this unfortunately the classes are lishus for the Ilan Ishmasa of Genya. Genya Bas Reb Moshe. Zon al zang gezunt, right? Zon al zang gezunt, umstark. Okay, we're learning Tanya. Rabbi said learning Tanya. And we're at the end of the Pedicure test. Last week we didn't learn Tanya. Last week we reviewed the Tanya from the beginning. So if you're here last week, you're up to speed. Anisht, you're here today. Um, the, the, the immediate conversation, what we're in the middle of discussing, is what we call Pinteliyid. Pinteliyid has many names. We call him Yechidah Shebenesh, we call him Pinteliyid, we call him the Alter Rebbe calls it Chochma. In Tanya, you don't have the words Chaya and Yechid at all. I told you this many times. The Tanya is not written in the language of Kabbalah. The Tanya is written in the language of Zayar. It's interesting that the Tanya is written in the language of the Zayar. In Zayar, you have Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, and Neshama, and Neshama. That's what you have. The language of Chaya Yechid, it's a Medrish, which is brought in Kabbalah. That is all. bring it. So the Tanya, which is the Tevish of Eksav of is written in the language of the Zayar. And the, the Maimorim, which are the Tevish of Apeh, of the Tevish of Eksav, which is the Tanya, are not written in the same language as the Tanya is written. Maimorim written language in, the, in this, in the, of, the, of Kabbalah. It's interesting. It's, you ha sometimes you see a contradiction between what it says in Tanya, it says in Lukut Tated. It's, it's a different language. And you have to adapt it. So in Tanya, Yechid is called Chochmah. The spark. And the Alter Rebbe says that this guy named Chochmo, Yechidish of Nefesh, and the Kodesh Ayadus, or Pintel or whatever you want to call him, is called Mustad. It's concealed. It's hidden. It's not overt. It's not obvious. It's not revealed. And its concealment, its Hested, has two conditions. One condition is that we lose access to it, lose control over it. And the word that he uses to denote this is golos. Golos means exile. But the connotation of the word golos is you put somebody in jail and you lock them in a cell, and you take the key with you. That's golos. The Gemara says, Ein Adam Matir is Atzmem Ibeis Asurim, a person that cannot redeem himself, of course, cannot untie himself from a state of being tied down, from a state of being locked. Somebody else has to redeem him. The second condition of, of this Yechid HaShav HaNefesh, this Nekut HaSayad, this Pint HaLeyid, is called Shino, or Shaina, sleep. When a person is asleep, they don't need anything extraneous necessarily to wake them up, they can wake themselves up. And the Alter Rebbe presents us with this duality that there is an idea that the Pintel Yid is in Golos, which means I have no control. And there's the idea that the Pintel Yid is in a state of sleep where it's just a question of waking it up and it cannot be exiled. The big Chiddush of the Alter Rebbe, the big idea, I once worked for JLI, it's not a big idea. <laughs> the big idea of the Alter Rebbe is that there's a part of the Neshama which can never be exiled. It can only be asleep. There's a lot of the neshama which can be awake, it can be sleeping, and through misdeeds or not done deeds, misdeeds or missed deeds, we can exile the neshama, we lose, we lose access. But by a yid, that's what makes a yid a yid, that there's always a part, there's a point that can never be in exile, can only be asleep. In other words, it's never in a condition that it's unwake up a bull. <laughs> it can always be woken up, and that's called shina. Now the way it plays out in the Tanya is that it's a pasuk. Chochma gives life to her host. So this means Chochma or Yechida in the language of Tanya gives life to the whole person. So the Alter Rebbe proposes that we have Pintel Yid, you have Chochma in your hands and in your feet and in your fingers and in your toes and your hair and your skin or your nails. But in as much as Chochma gives life to the whole body, 
Chochma can be in a Gola state. If we do Avedis or we miss many mitzvahs, we can find ourselves in a position where we can't access that Chochma. And then there is Chochma the way it is, B'mayach Shabarash. Chochma in its, in its original seat, in its place, which is in the right side of the brain, which is where the, which is the Mayach HaChochma, the, the seat of Chochma. Here the Alter Rebbe proposes it can never be Golos, you can never lose control over it. It can always be woken up, even in the biggest Rishoyim. And this is the Pintaliyid. And honestly, that's what makes a Jew a Jew. What makes Jew Jewish is that even though a Jew who does a Vedas and he's called a Rosh, is Klippa. Klippa doesn't mean he does bad things. Klippa means he's bad. There's a very big difference between doing bad things and being bad. And in this case, that means he's lost access to his Pintele. Not only is he doing wrong things, if he wanted to do right things, he doesn't have the Koyach to do it because his Nekudah Sayyadus, his Pintaliyid, his Chochma, is, is exiled, is out of his control. But the point of Chochma, the way it exists in the Mayach, in, in, in the Mayach Shabarash, in the mind, in the brain of the person's head, when it comes to a Yid, can never be in Gauls, it can only be asleep. And because it's only asleep, it can always be woken up. And it can always be woken up, we say, that he has an Ahava Mesuteris. What does Ahava Mesuteris mean? I love and don't know I love. It's a weird concept. <laughs> Ahava Mesuteris means the person has a lot of money stashed away in a safe and he doesn't know about it. So he's rich and he doesn't know about it, yeah? So it's Ashinus Mesuteris, yeah? But what do you mean? How do you have love and it's hidden? If, love is a, an experience. Love is an emotion. Ahava Mesuteris is, a, is, a, is an, it's an ironic concept. What does it mean I have a hidden love? Either I love or I don't love. And of course the answer is it's a potential love. Since when do we count potential loves as love? I could love a certain food. I've never tasted it. So you're not going to say I have, I have a hidden love for that food. I just don't know I love it because I've never tasted it. I don't love it because I don't know what it is. How do you have a pinta liyida, a hidden love? And the teretz is because Hashem planted it in the neshama. We have an inherent connection to Hashem. An inherent, an inner connection to the Ebishter. And it's never in a position where you say it's exiled, it's out of my control, it's out of my access. And this is what we call the hidden love. About a yid we say that he has a love and that the love can be unknown to him or her and he loves anyway. That's the type of said. It's, it's I love God and I don't know it. That concept of I love Hashem and I don't know it is predicated on the idea that Hashem put that love there or there's a piece of Hashem inside of us. There's a piece, of, a piece of Hashem inside everything. If it wasn't a piece of Hashem inside this bench, the bench wouldn't exist. The piece of Hashem in this box of tissues, the box of tissues would not have existed. By a Yid, he has access to it. And that's the translation of the words, Ava Mustadis, a hidden love. And then the Alter Rebbe proceeds to say that this hidden love is aroused, it's awakened. Even in the biggest Russia, if you have the right conditions, it's triggered, it's it's moved out of its complacency. And that is when a yid is pushed, when a yid is squeezed in a way that touches this nerve, then the yid wakes up. So let's read. Inside, we're on Dav Chav Hei Aleph, which is page 49, the opposite of page 48. Okay. You know what, I want to start on the bottom of 48, last line. And I, I don't want to read straight, I just want to show you the words. The last line, or the, actually the first line on 49, the top of page 49. Chavhei Amiral, first line. V'lachein, this is why. Nikras av azu kiss. This love, which is in the divine soul. Sheretzeinah v'cheftel adovak by the Shem that has a will and a desire to become dovok, one with Hashem. The source of all living things. B'shem Ava Muzuteras, we call it a hidden love. And in the words hidden love, there's two connotations. The first is hidden and the second is love. Hidden means I don't know about it and love means I love without knowing that I love, which is a funny concept because it's there in the Neshama. Ki it's, it's present but it's concealed. Umechusen is covered over. And here comes the division. 
Belavush sack the klipa in a thick garment, a sack garment of klipa, but peishi Yisrael and Jewish sinners. Umimena, because of this, nichnas behem ruach shtos, they can be uh, invaded by a spirit of folly. Lachte to sin, the Gemara says, ein adam chete vechulu, a person does not do an aved unless he's overtaken by a ruach shtos, by a spirit of folly, and the spirit of folly allows him to do an aved. So this is the first level. That is a part of my neshama which can be in Golos. I lose control. I lose control to such an extent that I can do an Aved. I just want to tell you for a minute. The metaphor of a, of a, of a Ruach Sak, of a Levush Sak. We talked about this before our interruption. What is a Levush Sak? A garment of Sak. Imagine you take burlap, right? Denim. The same material from which make, you make clothes. But instead of making a design, a pattern and a design, that gives space for the mobility of the hands, of the middle of the field, you make it, in, uh, the feet, you make it into a bag. A bag. Big enough to put the person inside. He's also dressed, he's wearing clothes. But instead of the clothing providing mobility, the clothing encumber, it's like a straight jacket. You understand? You're wearing clothing, but instead of the clothing expressing a person, the clothing is supposed to present us. And the way we dress, makes us feel a certain way and the way we dress affects how we present ourselves to other people. It's a fact of life and it's a concept in Torah. You're wearing an outfit that completely encumbers you. It imprisons you. That's the marshal. And the nimshal is a person has a spark of Hashem but it's trapped inside a bag and in the gullus level he can't untrap it. He can't access it. He can't redeem it. So he continues, Ella, however, Shegolos has it. This notion that my pintaliyid is an exile, which means I no longer have a way of accessing it, is libechinas chachma, to the aspect of chachma is eine ela, is only libechinas to that part of the chachma, ha mispashetes mimena benefesh kulo lachayesa, it radiates throughout the entire soul and the entire body to give it life, that's what I told you. Vachachma techaya ba'alel, as much as the chachma goes into the rest of the body to sustain it, the Chochmah that goes into the hands, into the feet, into the fingers, into the toes can be exiled. We can lose control of it. And he continues. Aval, I have a student whose quotable quote is as opposed to, right? Aval, as opposed to, Sheinesh ve'ikir, the root and, and base. Shel bechinas Chochmah shebenev shalikis. Of this aspect in the Neshama, which the Tanya calls Chochmah, we call Pintelayid, who b'meich and the way it is in the brain, Says the Rebbe, this aspect of the chokma eino mislabeshes belavush sag de klipa. It can never be entrapped in the sack-like garment of klipa that affects an absolute loss of self-control. Belay b'cholol asmali b'bechinas golos mavish. And again, the definition of the word golos. I'm locked in a jail cell. Somebody locked the gate and took the key with him. I can't, the Gemara says, Ein chavush mataras asudim. This is a psychological truth as well. A prisoner cannot redeem him or herself from his own state of imprisonment. And that's the meaning of the word Golos. Continues the Alter Rebbe and says, Rak, the Pintela Yit, the Chochma Shabbenefesh, the way it is in the Mayach HaChochma, can never be exiled in the Jew. It's Bebchinas Shena. It's sleeping. But a Shaiman, a person who's a Rasha, and I find this interesting. I, I don't know. I don't think we're to show him. <laughs> we're mixed up. That's what we are. We're mixed up. We're confused. But we're not bad, right? How many of you feel we feel like Yechidish Abenefesh? He says, by Arosha, the Yechidish Abenefesh is asleep. By most of us, on most days, by the Rebbe, the Yechidish Abenefesh is his galus. Says the Rebbe, actually, Bukhin is Shayna, but Shayim is asleep in Arosha. Ve'ena, Poyelis, Pu'ulasa, and it's not able to do what it needs to do. Bohem in the proactive life of that person. Kozman Shasukim, so long as they're preoccupied, Bedaitim will be nasa in their mind, in the knowledge of their understanding, Betaivas Ha'elam and the desires of the world. I like to translate the word taiva as weakness in the things that weaken us from the world. I find it also fascinating that he mentions Das and Bino and doesn't mention Chochmah. There's a reason why the Alter Rebbe chooses these words so carefully. And, um, but we'll leave it alone. Ah, this is where we're holding. However, as opposed to 
This is what we're holding. When a Jew, when any Jew, is tested about a matter of faith, that faith, as was discussed in the previous chapter, in chapter 18, is above one's intelligence. And it touches the soul, the point in the soul, which is called Chochma. Now appreciate, appreciate. When we learned chapter 18, which was a year ago, it was, uh, it's quite some time, I explained to you that there's two levels. There's a level that we call Chaya, and there's a level that we call Yechida, and there's a very, very big difference between them. The level which is called Chaya means that a person understands that some things are above their mind. A person understands that some things, forgive me for using this cliche, are worth dying for. So when the mind understands that some things are above the mind, it's connected to the mind. Because the mind inspired that this has to be above the mind. In other words, you're an intelligent person. You understand God. And you understand that in order to have a relationship with this God, you have to let go of the mind that taught you about Him in the first place. I talk about this often because it's a very important idea, what they call a leap of faith. A leap of faith doesn't mean I have no seich. A leap of faith means that seichel is not a relationship. It's information. My mind tells me that there is a God. Now what am I going to do about it? I have to put the mind down, leave it alone, and make a leap and have a relationship with the Eibishter, which is a simple relationship. If a person has a complicated relationship with the Eibishter, he hasn't let go of his mind. If he hasn't let go of his mind, he doesn't really have a relationship with, he's still negotiating. He's intellectually working it out. But that entire process, that entire process is based on the fact that his connection to the Eibishter begins with his mind. And in chapter 18, the Alter Rebbe said, you can have an Emunah like this, and you can have a Mesir Stefesh like this. A Muna where my brain says, I gotta let go of my brain, have a relationship with the Eibishter. And a Muna where my brain says that some things are worth giving my life for. But that's not what we're talking about. That's not Ava Mesuteris. What we're talking about is that's called in our culture, Yechida Shebenef. Yechida means that the Eibish to put it there. Our connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which we're going to call the Muna, where you let go of your mind and have a relationship with Hashem. And our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is the basis of what we would call in our culture, Mesidas Nefesh, Al Kiddush Hashem, has nothing to do with us. It's not an intellectual process. You don't figure this out. The Eibish to planted it there. This is called Yechida. The Yechida is the seat of an Amuna which is not only above Seichel, it has nothing to do with it. Yechid is the seat of Mesides Nefesh, which is not only above Seichel, it has nothing to do with it. And now the Alter Rebbe says this connection, the Yechid connection, the Amuna Mesides Nefesh connection, which is not at all based on the mind. It's based entirely on the soul. So we discussed that some of it could be in Golis. One point of it can never be in Golis, it can only be asleep. And it's triggered, it's awakened. When a person is tested, I'm reading it again. However, when a yid is tested, about a matter of faith, which is above understanding, even nova al nefesh, it touches the neshama, the bechinas chokhmah shabbat, the chokhmah of the neshama where the yichida is. Azahi neida mishinasa, the neshama wakes up, upel puulasa does its activity. Bekeach adeshem hamalubish baba, the power of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which is inside of herself, and this is called the pintel yid. This is the idea that we call in our culture Lo Yidach Rimenu Nidach. There's no such thing as a lost Jew. There's no such thing as a lost Jew because a Jew can't lose his Jewishness. And if a Jew can't lose his Jewishness, a Jew can't be lost. What does it mean a Jew cannot lose his Jewishness? It doesn't mean that he knows all the laws and he practices all the mitzvahs. Unfortunately, that you could lose. But you cannot lose the inner Jew, the Pintaliyid. O Kabeshikosov, as the Apostle says, Vayikas, that the Abishta wakes up. As though he's been sleeping. The Pintaliyid is woken up as if it's been asleep. And he's roused with the force of Mesidus Nefesh. That when the Pintaliyid is woken up, it's La made Minisoyan to overcome tests. In their relationship with the Kaddish Baruch, which we call the Munah, which is Bali Shum Tam Vadas Vesechel Musagle, without any reason and any understanding and any intuitive knowledge which a person has. Lehis gaber al to be stronger than the klipis. Than the other side who are pulling him in a different direction. 
the time of Salem as added lust and desires of this world be they permitted or prohibited Shahurgo Bahaman which he's accustomed to the limes Baham and be disgusted by them the live and instead to choose for himself Hashem the Abishter is his portion, is his lot. to give to God Almighty his soul. Al even if it requires sanctifying the name of Hakadosh Baruch. This is a fascinating idea. This is a fascinating idea. It's an important idea. Al Rebbe argues, right? I've told this to you a hundred times <laughs> over the course of uh, I can't say a hundred years, but many years, a quarter of a hundred years, that there's something called klipa. There's something called kedusha. Each one has a set of rules. And then there's something called a Yid, <laughs> who breaks all the rules. The entity which is called Kedusha, it says in Tanya chapter 6, is Bittl. Kedusha means my entire reality that I express Hashem. It's called in the fancy word Dvekis. And Dvekis means not I'm bottled to Him, not I choose to serve Him. Dvekis means I'm an expression of Him. That's Kedusha. What's Klipa? Klipa is any bottle. If something is not, you don't have to be bad. To be clip, you have to just be not good. Klipa means ain't a bottle. If I lack bittle, then I'm clip. In between those two is this phenomena called the neshama. And the neshama is tricky. Because the neshama is a little bit of both. The neshama is kedusha and the neshama is clip. How could that work? And the answer is, I have a The best Jew and the worst Jew always has a point. Where his connection to Hashem is never broken, and it's the seat which is the source of Mesiris Nefesh, Akedesh Hashem, and the highest Madrigas of Emuna, and so on. And at that point, the Neshama is always Kedush. It's, quote, only, end quote, that it's sleeping and it has to be woken up. But when it's woken up, when the Pintaliyid wakes up, when the Pintaliyid wakes up, he wakes up in all of his force. In all of his force. Have you ever watched? I mean, I, I am telling this to you because I, I, I made a point of observance. Have you ever watched Baile Tshuva do Tshuva? I mean it very seriously. A Baal Tshuva doing Tshuva. I was a kid. I was 16. And I was learning in Maristan. And there was in Maristan, there was before Matantene. You know that. Maristan is still before Matantene. There's al yeinim la yed la tachtenim and tachtenim la yal. You have two yeshivas. Downstairs is called Tferes Bachurim, and upstairs is called Tamchit Mimim. And there's a Gzeire, Al Yenim, Al Yedl Tachtenim, Tachtenim, Al Yal Al Yenim. I'm not sure which is a bigger Avera, but I was in the Al Yenim, and I spent every three minutes in Tachtenim. I was a 16 year old Bacharel, I was a pretty Chsidish boy at that point in my life. And I knew, I mean, I had a house, I grew up in a house which was full of Balichova. I grew up in the 70s. We always had guests in our home, always. And I was, I was absolutely intrigued by the phenomena. Talking about a yeshiva, I don't know how many bachim, 50 bachim, 75 bachim, who were young. They weren't 30. They weren't 30. They weren't people who started their lives and then they had an epiphany. They were 18, 19, 20. College students, young college students, who grew up in very secular homes. No tarasa mishpacha, no kashras. Shabbos retmanish, no kashras. You know, traditional Jews keep kosher, at least as they say, in the house. And they, they tore away from their whole world. And remember, I was a kid. I was very indisposed from the world that they had that, quote, I was not able to have. And they were just a few years older than I. I was 16. Mem Aleph. Mem. It was the summer of Mem. Mem Beis. The summer of 82. So I was almost 17. I was, I was 16 years old. And I actually sat down with a few of them and asked them to tell me their story and I actually wrote it down someplace. But you watch a person do tshuva and you see a so-called normal person be absolutely nuts. Crazy. What's been crazy? They're like a tzaddik. Like a tzaddik. The, the, the readiness for sacrifice and the disregard for self and one of the most beautiful parts of the process of them doing tshuva is they look at everybody around them, everybody's perfect. In yeshiva full of, everybody's so holy and so perfect, yeah? And it lasts about three months. And then they discover that the people around them are not so perfect. And then they even discover that the, 
the teachers are not, there's a there's an achsava, there's a disappointment there's a there's a, a what's I don't know what the right word is a resolution a setback there's a there's a landing you know so the, uh, when the Gemara says that about Baal is higher than a tzaddik it's true for about three or six months and then more I mean there are Baal Tshuva never stop being Baal Tshuva and Yichav Gezen Azach Ayidin Yichav Gezen Azach Ayidin I knew such Jews not a lot not a lot but they were they were Mamish Tadikim I mean that's to talk about but more a guy once told me <laughs> I'm a, I was a BT for six months and now I'm a, an FFB like the rest of you but it's very disappointing because you, you look at the people around you as perfect, and then when you find that they're not perfect, you know, in your mind, they're hypocrites. You know? So what did I sign on for? What did I... S- <laughs> and, and then they have to figure out that us. none of us are perfect, we're doing our best, and guess what? Even they are not perfect. Some of them, if they can't do it perfect, they don't want to do it. Unfortunately, that happens sometimes. But they have to figure out how to deal with their own you know what the nice word for hypocrisy is? <laughs> Inconsistency. <laughs> In, but this is the process. But when the person is doing tshuva, they're mamish higher than a tzaddik, and I saw it with my eyes. How does the Alter Rebbe express it in this pedic? Look at the words. He says, I'm reading the words a second time. A person wakes up as if he'd been asleep, and of course, what was asleep, or supposedly asleep, or presumably asleep or called asleep the neshama the pinta the yid lamed bin esuyin to withstand tests the emunas Hashem about the matters of faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu belishum tam vedas v'seich without any understanding without reason and knowledge and seich musaglai which a person is able to apprehend meaning somebody challenges your pintale someone touched your nekudah someone touched your point and you re- respond with a force that says no one's going to touch that point. I always tell you the same stories. I was, <laughs> below here they have a little Chedesh right below where I'm standing. It just used to be the balcony before the Rebbe's stroke. And when they built the platform, so they excavated underneath, and there's a little shul here, at this forum, and it, it's constantly changing. The, the rooms are always changing. So I was once davening there. It was a good place to daven. And uh, of course, 770 is is a place for people who collect arms, right? Panhandlers, schnorrers. And there's a chassidish young man, the biverit mit payis. He's collecting the doves. And then there's another guy who is a, a pretty short fellow, quite portly. What a great word! <laughs> Pleasantly plump as begematria portly. And he was a nudnik. He's still a nudnik. I mean, I, I see him from time to time. He gets great pleasure from telling you that he's a Mechal Shabbos. So you give him a quarter, he says, I went Friday night to uh, this and that and the other. And you, you talk to him, talk to the wall. But uh, that's what his pleasure is. You give him a quarter and he gives you schaf. You give him the quarter, he gives you a shtech. You should know, I'm not religious. My psychologist told me that I'm allowed to go on Shabbos to the... To this and, that, the other. and if you're foolish, I mean, he's, a, he's a harmless, you know. He'll put on film if you ask him, but this is his shtick. So these two schnutters are both collecting from the few people who are davening in this room right below us. And this, uh, and he's doing his thing, you know. He's collecting his quarters and he's telling everybody how Friday night I went out with a taxi to this and this place and we did some gambling or whatever it was. This is, so the other guy, Bistago. <laughs> I gave him, you're a guy. You should have seen the reaction. You should have seen the reaction. He, he was so upset. He was, de- he's always shtechinging us, you know, and, and, and once you learn him, you know, you give him your quarter and you move on, you know, but the, <laughs> the first time you think you're dealing with a normal person, but someone did it to him in reverse, you know. Pfft. He was so upset. Don't call me a guy. And he went on and on and on and on. And you saw that it wasn't a game. He touched a nerve. Now, 20 minutes later, he forgot about it. He's going around telling you he's a guy. But when he says it, it's okay. Because when he says it, he knows, you know, he crosses his fingers, as they say. When somebody else tells him exactly the same thing. He disturbed my whole shakras. But at the same time, a yid has a point. A yid has a point. 
that point when you trigger it, when you touch it, a fire comes out. And this fire is a fire of Mesiris Nefesh. But that we can understand. I mean, the fire of Mesiris Nefesh. But continue reading. Lehizgaber ala klipis. To be stronger than klipis. Now, you would think that this pentelayid, this chok mesheb nefesh, is stronger than klipis about what? About what triggers it? About what triggers it? When a yid is put in a position where has for he, he can cross a certain line, that if he crosses this line, he has to tell himself, I'm not a yid anymore. I mean, I was a child. My malamid read to us from the Sipuri Hasidim the story of Poi Nitman Yosel Lagan of Akadish. I'm sure I told you the story when we did your test. You know the story Poi Nitman Yosel Lagan of Akadish? The Rujin for Nasach. He traveled and he came to all, he came to a city and they had old Batayam, they had cemeteries that were then five, six hundred years old, a thousand years old. And he took a spazir, he went into the cemetery and he went from grave to grave and he found an old grave which was then a few hundred years old and it said simply, here lies Yosef the holy thief. Yosef Agan of HaKadosh. So he asked the people of the cemetery, you know, if he's a Gan, if he's not a Kodesh, and if he's a Kodesh, he's not a Gan, how does Gan and Kodesh go together? So they told him that the, the cemetery, the Chavadish have a Pinkasim, they have Pinkas. A Pinkas means a ledger. And they see if they can find a record of this person. And they found it, and they opened to that page. And the story there was that he was a Ganif. He had klepek a hand, you know. He had adhesive hands, like geckos, you know. <laughs> but he didn't use it to clip to stick to the ceiling. He used it to stick to your wallet or to your piece of silver, whatever you put down, you know. Of a state, state, of a licked off and them, as they say in Yiddish. You leave it around, it disappears. And uh, then there was a church in town. And the church, of course, had a, a tower. And the shmuel was that in this bell tower they were storing treasure that was being passed through from one place to another on the way to Rome, or way from Rome was a treasure. So he climbed into the treasure, into the tower, to borrow it, as they say in English, for an unspecified amount of time, indefinitely. And they caught him red-handed. So at first they were going to kill him, and then the Galak came along and said, wait a minute, we could, the we could save his life, save his soul. And they gave him the option to either Rachman Aslan to convert to Christianity or um, they'll kill him. So I'm a with Rabbi Ekas. I mean, I can hear him telling us the story. It's, it's more than 40 years ago. It's 45 years ago to be that. He said it so many times that I can, I can hear him singing it. I may be a thief, but I'm not going to be. And it played itself out over many days. They kept them in a cell and they kept on coming back. You know, Kedakam, first they tried Gutens, they tried to be sweet to him and nice to him, and that didn't work, they started to threaten him. The end was they burnt him alive, limb by limb. They put up a, a vat of tar, and they made a fire, it was incredibly hot, and they burnt him limb by limb. And each time they gave him the choice again. And he said, So when his neshama left his goof and the Jews got his remains, they wrote on his tzian, Pei nitman Yosef Aganav HaKadosh. That's the story. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I could have been more graphic, but I said, okay, good. So you win and I win. Um, it's, I, I hear the story as a child. I was in Rabbi Ekas's class, I was 11. I was 11. And I can hear him singing those words. He must have told the story to his students every year. I can still hear him singing those languages and stark. But anyway, this is called Mesiris Nefesh HaKadosh Hashem. But then the Alter Rebbe adds, Liz Gabra al Taivis v'Taivis Eilam Hazeh. Look at the next words. Behet and Rabbi Yisrael. How does Mesiris Nefesh, how does Kiddush Hashem have to do with Taivis Hetes? It's not Naveda. And the answer is that when the Yechid Shabbat Nefesh emerges, it takes over the whole person. So it's not only that the Yechidosh HaBenefesh is in a state of Mesidas Nefesh. When it comes to Iker Kola Ikrim, it's in a state of Mesidas Nefesh even when it comes to Tafel HaTfelim. That's the point. When the Yechidosh HaBenefesh emerges, not only is this person Mesa Nefesh, the smallest and tiniest aspect of Yiddishkeit is done with such a devoutness which was equal to Mesidas Nefesh. 
So in other words, when the Yechidah comes out, it takes him over. So the Alter Rebbe's message is, his point is, that every Yid has a pinta there, which is impossible to lose. Because it can only be asleep. And it's roused when a Yid is tested, when a Yid is squeezed. And when the Yid is tested and is squeezed, that pinta there emerges, and it takes him over completely. Now in our times, fortunately for us, Mesidas Nefesh is part of our history. You know, we have stories. But Tshuva we know. Tshuva we know. Tshuva we've seen and Tshuva we see. Tshuva is exactly the same process. Now, how, what triggers about Tshuva? What triggers? What makes a human being be so inspired that he's prepared to change his whole life? Him and his wife and his children. What triggers it? The answer, I mean, obviously there's events. There's a, everybody's got a story. But the underlying issue is that the Nishama is awakened. And when the Nishama is awakened, there's no limitations. There's no parameters. There's no limits. Let's keep reading, okay? So the Alter Rebbe says, the limits behem to be discussed by any kind of desires. The Lifchale to choose for himself, Adeshem de Ebishter, Lechelke or Legerole as his lot and his portion. I want to tell you, um, I've learned this page of Tanya many times, as you can imagine. Yeah. I taught this for many, many years. Yeah. In Tanya, and he gets a kid of Simon Ches. Ashrenu Matev Chalkeinu, Manoim Gadaleinu. Al Trebez against the Kedish, Ashrenu Matev Chalkeinu. And he brings over there the infant Zoyer Tfei. Remember that? Maybe it's against the Kedish Simon Zayn. Remember Zoyer Tfei? Avuch, but I have a Zoyer Tfei, right? You have to keep all the mitzvahs, but nevertheless, every yid has a Zoyer Tfei. Remember that? So when the Rebbe speaks this Indian of Avuch, my have a Zoyer Tfei, he connects it to this Ashrenu Matev Chalkeinu, Manoim Gadaleinu. Why is one Yid's Zohar Tfei one Indian and another Yid's Zohar Tfei a different Indian? The answer is this is his Chelek and this is his Goyal. Which means every Jew has a mitzvah which is taka, most important to him. But the reason it's most important isn't reasonable. It's just his Chelek. It's his Goyal. It's the peace that the Abishta gave. So you understand, we all have to keep all mitzvahs. And nevertheless, everybody has one mitzvah, which is his most important mitzvah. And of course, the Rebbe says that today this is Mashiach, to bring about this Gaus of Malach HaMashiach. This Zohar Tfei is called Chelkei It's not logical that this should be his piece. This is what the dice, this is what the lottery delivered, and this is his Chelek. So this Yid is choosing Yiddishkeit because his neshama was revealed on a madrega of chelik and goyd. In other words, his, his dedication to teiru and mitzvahs is not because of the reason within teiru and mitzvahs, because this is his chelik and his geil. Lim said lei nafshe, to give away to him, his neshama, al kedusha shmei, for the sanctity of Hashem's name, right? You, you know, if you learn in my modern, sometimes it says mesiris nefesh, and sometimes it says mesiris nefesh, al kiddush Hashem. Now, I, I years and years ago researched, studied this, and at least in some Sfarim, Mesiras Nefesh could be Chaya. Mesiras Nefesh Al Kiddush Hashem is only Yechid. In other words, I'm giving away my life and it's not about me. It's about the sanctification of Hashem's name. It's not even about me. This is the Madrega of Yechid. Va'af even though ki govru haklipeth govru alav kol yom. We're dealing with a person who throughout his entire life, Klipa was preeminent, Klipa was stronger than him. And he failed. The Klippa was winning because he was not strong enough to fight it off. Kemai Merazal is mentioned in the Gemara. It's a Medrash, which the Altarebbe quoted earlier in Perik Yudayan, and I think earlier in this Perik as well. Marasha means that he's lost control. His Yetzirah controls him. To what extent does his Yetzirah control him? That we call it Golos. Golos means it's not that the is asleep. It means that his that the Yitzhak is asleep. It means the Yitzhak is entrapped. Entrapped means he can't help himself. He can't help himself. And I want you to know that I believe that this is a, a source in Torah for the way they explain addiction. There's a whole debate about this. A, a, an addict is a person who's lost control. The Alta Rebbe describes it here. He doesn't use the word addiction. He uses the word gullus. I have a weakness that the strength that I need to overcome this weakness is not available to me. It's exile. I have no control. That's what we're dealing with. And that's the meaning of a Rashaim Hebeshus Libam, a person who's lost control. 
ולא יאכלם, כמי מלאז, מכל מקום, סטיל, even though we're dealing with a person whose relationship with Ra is called Golos, and Golos means even if I want to, I cannot master myself, כשבו לידי ניסויים, when this person faces a test, and the test touches that spark, that pintle, which in the language of the Tanya is, the Chochmah Sheben Nefesh, the way it's in the Mayach Sheben Oish, the Chochmah in the brain, as opposed to the Chochmah, which radiates to the whole body, about a matter of faith in the one God. She is a Dasa, that the foundation of this mitzvah is Bahadar Ekevish, is in the holy mountains. And what is the holy mountains? Who Bechinas Chochmah Sheben Nefesh Elikis, it's the aspect of Chochmah, which is in divine soul. Rabbi Yisai, we have Ramach Mitzvahs. And the Ramach Mitzvahs are connected to the Ramach Eivirim. Right? It says in Sfarim. It's originally a Zoyar, and it says in Sfarim, there's a Sefer called Charedim, which goes through not all 613 Mitzvahs, but it goes through several hundred Mitzvahs and tells you which part of the body is connected to which Mitzvah. Each piece of the goof, each avid of the goof is connected to another mitzvah. And as I've explained to you many times, there's a vodim pratim, there's individual limbs, and then there's called a vodim klolium, general limbs. General limbs are not included in a vodim pratim. There's 248 limbs, the brain is not amongst them. Because to be a limb, you have to have a bone, the brain doesn't have a bone. The tongue is not amongst them. The eyeballs are not amongst them. The heart is not amongst them. The lungs is not amongst them. The liver is not amongst them. The spleen is not amongst them. The intestines, the the avodim, the organs that the Chazal call avodim shaneshamish and nefesh tliya behem. You take away one of these, you can't live. Are not in the chesed of the ramach evening. Not because they're not important, but because they're super important, and they're called avodim klolim, general organs, general limbs. And, by the way, the 248 limbs each have a bone. The, these avodim klolim, the Mishnah says in a sefer, which is called Sefer Yitzira, that there's 22 of them. There's 22 of these avodim. And it's based on the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. That's how the Sefer Yitzira goes. Sefer Yitzira is the Mishnahis of Alabes. And he connects each one of these avodim, which you can't live without them, to the oasis of the olive base. It's a sort of a higher madrege. So the Rebbe says, in the brain of a person, and the brain of a person is situated up here, but the brain of the person which is situated up here, to be sure, is an aver cloli. It's an organ, it's not a limb, it's an organ that encompasses the whole person. You take chas v'shalom that away, you're not missing something, there's no life. So the whole human being are these avodim, and in the 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 mayach shabarosh, the brain which is in the person's head, there rests chokma, and this chokma which is in the brain of the person's head can never be in golos, can never be exiled. It can only be asleep. It can only be sheina. And if you trigger it, if you wake it up, the yid becomes a valchuba, higher than a tzaddik. So they say, the wording is what? The foundation of emuna, the seat of faith. Rabbi say, emuna is not a mitzvah. Emuna is not a mitzvah. The first mitzvah is to know God, not to believe in God. Belief in God is not a mitzvah. Not because belief in God is not important, but belief in God is super important. It's not a part of the person, it's the whole person. And the seat of emuna is here. Says the Rebbe, she says, that the foundation, that the seat of Emunah is Baharare Kedish in the holy mountains, which he translates as, he bechinas chokhmah, it's the property, the quality of chokhmah, shebenevish alikis, which is in the divine soul that sits in the brain, shebo melubish eidin seiv baruchu, in which manifests godliness. Says the Rebbe, hare. How do you translate hare in English? Emphasis. That's the best translation I got. When you trigger, when you rouse this Chochmah Shabbanefesh, because you your Amunah was touched, and it's aroused, all Klippa is nullified, they become like nothing in the presence of this revelation, of this experience, and he brings four Pesukim. The Klippa of the Post, it says, Next to him all Goyim are nothing. It says, Behold, your God, 
your enemies, your enemies, your enemies should be lost, your spudders should be scattered for game. It says also, as wax melts in the presence of fire, your evaded they should be lost. And the fourth part is harim Mountains should melt like melt like wax. And the reason is for Psukim, it says in, in the Chesidus is the Gimel Klipas at Meis the And the fourth one is Klipas Nege. This is the power of Yehidish Ben Nefesh. The power of Yehidish Ben Nefesh is even in the biggest Russia. If you touch the wrong nerve in Ayid, he Kama Vegam Nitzava. It's very powerful, right? If you know the story of the Jewish exile. It happens over and over and over again that the Jewish people find themselves in a place and all the Goyim want that they should do is assimilate. Become like them. So they try uh, mit Gutens first, you know, let's be nice to them, let's embrace them, let's include them, yeah? And when they realize that, that doesn't work, they turn to violence, they turn to abuse, they turn to threats, they turn to killing. It's the biggest mistake they made. If they would stay with the uh, appeasement and with the... Look what's going on in America. Jews are dying and no one is killing them. Why? Because it's not a war. It's attrition, you know. It's falling asleep. This is the, this is the, the difficulty of the world in which we live. And the MS is even we, even Eden in America, have this spark. And the Rebbe triggers, wakes up Yiddish and Nishamas, they should do tshuva. That's the Rebbe's home at sea. He touches Jewish souls, he rouses them to do tshuva. And when the Nishama wakes up, the person is ready for him to say, it's never shall kiddush Hashem. Questions or comments? I said something about the Nishama has Right? I'm having a problem. The Nishama doesn't have cleave. I'm having a problem understanding what... The neshama can be covered over by klipa, but the neshama doesn't have klipa. The neshama comes into the guf through the nef shabamis. So there's obstructions. So in a benyani or in a tzaddik where you never listen, those obstructions are much less. And a person who's uh, allowed himself indulgences, it's much, much more. It's not that it's part of the No, of course not. Right, it's Chaya. What does it mean? Because they understand it. It's not no, it is always beyond Seich. If it's beyond Seich that came from Seich. Right, so they, I, I want to tell you something. I have a recollection. You know what when you have a recollection? You're going crazy. I remember that Rebbe saying something. I probably spent 30 or 40 hours looking for this. I never found it. But I have a recollection that the Rebbe said in the Fabreng, and I couldn't possibly make this up. There's no way I would have made this up because you don't make these kinds of things up. I have a recollection where the Rebbe spoke about the Anusim, the Muranos. And he asked a very uncomfortable question. That the Gemara says, and this Gemara the Rebbe quoted many times, if Nebuchadnezzar, the Vuchadnezzar Melar Bavel, would have tortured Hanani Mishal of Azariah for one hour, 60 minutes, rather than throw them into a furnace, they would have prostrated themselves before the cell that the Vuchadnezzar made. But the Vuchadnezzar didn't do it. He threw them into the furnace right away, and the Abish they made a nest that their clothing burnt off, and they survived, like it says in the Sefer Daniel. Like it says in the Sefer Daniel, yeah? So the Rebbe said there were Jews who were a far cry from the Madrega of Chalayim Mishal of Azariah who were tortured for months, not for hours, for months, and wouldn't bend. How could the Gemara say that Chalayim Mishal of Azariah would have broken in one hour? And the Rebbe said to Klolos that bigger neshamas that have stronger nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, the yechid is more hidden. Weaker neshamas, that the nefesh, ruach, and neshama chai is much more concealed, the yechid is closer to the surface. So the mysterious nefesh, achanani, mishal, vazai is based on their understanding. So death, yeah, torture, no. In our generations, yidnu are completely not in that madrega, mes nefesh, achidish Hashem, but because since the nanach, the nefesh, ruach, and neshama chai is weak, the yechid is closer to the surface. Is that an answer to your question? Ah. Uh-huh. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll break. Thank you all for coming.